Hello and welcome to the official launch event of the INEOS Grenadiers. Whilst complexities of quarantine mean I'm in a studio in London, the team are all at the Alliance Riviera in Nice on the Côte d'Azur, where this Saturday the world's biggest cycling race will depart and its most successful team will be racing under a new name. As part of today's event, we'll be bringing you a series of exclusives. Here's what's coming up. Dressed for success, there's a first look at the team's new kit and bike. We'll chat to the four Grand Tour winners about the challenges on the road ahead. Team principal Sir Dave Brailsford and head coach Tim Kerrison will reveal their hopes for the coming months. And the covers are off. We'll be hearing a little bit more about the uncompromising Grenadier vehicle. And where better to start today than a chat with the man who's behind the 10 Grand Tour victories of this incredible team. It is, of course, Sir Dave Brailsford. Uh, good day to you, Dave, in a spectacular setting there for the launch, the home of OGC Nice. Of course, are a club that your team have a special relationship with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's brilliant to be here. Fantastic stadium and uh, a real affinity with uh, OGC Nice now, of course. We share the same ownership and as, as INEOS teams, there's a real camaraderie and it's very exciting for us to be here and hopefully we can share the French support here with, with our support for the team. It seems to be about more than just a name change and a kit change, this. Can you tell us a little bit about how this change came about and, and what it actually means? Yeah, absolutely. It, it is way more than that, I must say. You know, we, I guess one of the things about you know, running a team for a long time, trying to sustain success, is you have to reinvent yourself. You have to start again. You have to think and, and, and see where new challenges can come from. And, of course, we've been working with Jim and Ineos, and, and they're very ambitious, and they're full of ideas and projects and plans all the time. And in chatting to Jim, he was talking to me about the Grenadier project and what was happening and how that was developing. And we started talking about the, the built on purpose, the ethos of the Grenadier project. And it chimed very much with what we were doing. So through a chat, over a coffee, we thought, actually, there's an opportunity here for us to start afresh. The Grenadier is a new project and it's like a new start for us as well and a new chapter of our existence. And we share the same values and that's what we want to bring into the team. And we'll drill down a little bit later on into new faces, new personnel coming in as well. But we can see, if we uh, just have a little look there, there are two prototypes of the Grenadier uh, on set today. Are they going to play a role in the future of the team? How are they going to get involved? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, um, one of the things about a, a cycling team, professional cycling team, of course, you see the riders all the time on the road. But there's a massive logistical challenge to try and support them both in the race and off the race. And I mean, you know, they really are fit for purpose in that sense. So the, the Grenadiers will be part and parcel of our entourage and our sort of um, overall approach to make, you know, make the, the, the getting the job done easier than it has been in the past. So it's pretty exciting. I won't ask you any more, Dave, about the, the way the car works, the running of it and all those uh, things. Your, your expertise is obviously in the next few weeks on getting your, your riders across the line first. So we will talk about that a little bit later on. But thank you for the moment. A world beating cycling team. An uncompromising 4x4 built to overcome in all conditions. Committed to withstand the daily punishment, making sure that we get the job done. Two wheels driven by grit and determination. Resourceful, innovative, tenacious, passionate. It's not complicated. Greater together. The Ineos Grenadiers. Built on purpose. Well, joining me in the studio now is Mark Tennant, who's the commercial director of Ineos Automotive, to tell us a little bit more about the vehicle itself. So, Mark, tell us a bit about the history. Yes, of course. Great to be here, Gabby, and to tell you a bit about how the Grenadier came to be. So what we're doing is we're building a rugged, tough, gutsy 4x4. Um, there are a lot of SUVs out there, and we see a gap in the market for a proper off-roader um, that'll be very good on the motorway and on the school run, but really at home, the top of a French Alp, on a farm, on a sheep station, or in the African bush. That's what it's all about. 
And tell us about the relationship mm. and what it's like mm. to be associated with one of the most mm. successful sporting teams in the world. Well, it's brilliant. Um, hugely inspiring for the team within um, automotive, the Grenadier de delivery team, but also the wider INEOS. Um, we're running a INEOS um, Tour de France challenge this year. We've got about 86 teams, I think, at the latest count. Over 1,100 people signed up to virtually ride alongside the, uh, the riders in the Tour. So um, there's massive enthusiasm. Um, and of course, alongside that, we're able to bring through the INEOS Grenadiers the vehicle to the attention of a huge audience, which is of key as we build up to our start of production and having vehicles for sale. And Dave touched a little bit on, mm. on the relationship and he used the phrase built mm. on purpose which mm. is is something that aligns both the Grenadier mm. and the sporting teams. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about that concept. Well, it's key. Purpose is at the heart of, of what we're doing. We've set out from the beginning to say look this is a working tool. Um, you know it's really um, form over function. We try and make sure that everything on the vehicle is there to do a job. And equally focused on purpose is the is the team, and um, and we we really hope some of that magic dust in terms of the success that the team has had and will continue we hope to have will rub off on um, the Grenadier project as well. So what's next for the Grenadier? Lots. Um, <laughs> you know, first of all, the, the 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 vehicles that we see here down in Nice have been borrowed from the engineering team, um, so hopefully they'll be around and about for some of the three and a half thousand kilometres length of the tour. But we're in the process of a 1.8 million kilometer testing program to make sure that all these prototypes have actually been tested to breaking point so that when they get into the hands of customers they do that job that we prescribe that they really are delivering on that built on purpose promise. It sounds very mm. exciting. Thank you so it much, is. Mark, for that Enjoy. insightful glimpse into what's mm. going on in the future for the Grenadier. Now, you've seen them already, the new colours and a glimpse of how this team is going to look in the video. It's time to see them in the flesh, wearing their new Castelli kits, riding their Pinarello bikes and introduced by stars of the Ineos sporting family. Please welcome Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas. Ready to withstand daily punishment, but don't come much tougher than Geraint Thomas. Winner. After settling with injury, Chris Froome is tried by greed and determination. Geraint, thank you so much for joining us. That spectacular entrance there, befitting, of course, of this new team. And the bikes look great. The kit looks great, Geraint. You've been in this team for over a decade now. You've seen lots of changes. What does this feel like, this most recent change, to be an Ineos Grenadier? Yeah, it feels great. I think it's uh, definitely a big change. I think uh, I really like the kit. And I'm not just saying that. I think it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, one of the nicest ones I've worn. Then, obviously, you know, the Grenadiers look pretty good as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a nice, it's like a fresh start, you know, it's a clean start and then the future's excited now for the team, for sure. It is. Your future's exciting and everything's changed with you. You're a family man now. I understand Max has taken his first step. So you're going to be encouraging him to get on a bike soon? <laughs> uh, yeah, if he wants to, but I think uh, I'll be pushing him more towards golf and tennis, I think. <laughs> but... Uh, no, whatever he wants to do, you know, it's all about enjoying it. And, you know, I've had a great life riding my bike. So um, whatever he wants to do. And you talked recently, I think last week, about your love of racing in Italy and the Giro. You've had a bit more time to take a bit more detailed look at that challenge and what lies ahead. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's tough. You know, every Grand Tour is hard. But, um, you know, the racing in Italy is always, you know, it's different to the Tour. It's, it's obviously not as big sort of globally, but you know, the passion for cycling in Italy is, 
is right up there with any other country. You know, the, the fans love it. The roads are really great for racing and the actual race suits me well with three time trials and um, still a lot of hard climbs. But um, yeah, really excited now and it's five weeks or so away. So it's all guns blazing for that. Absolutely. Let me move over to Chris, a, a true legend of the sport and your recovery from your horrific crash last year, I think just elevates you even more, doesn't it? Because that was nothing short of miraculous. Were there times, Chris, where you ever thought you'd be back on a bike racing at this level? I mean, for me, luckily, I mean, from from the moment I woke up in ICU the, the next morning, the, the surgeon said to me, listen, you've got some pretty serious injuries, but you can recover from, from all, all the fractured bones. Um, you can make a full recovery, so there's no reason you can't get back to that, that highest level. And that, for me, was, was all I needed to hear at that point. And obviously, all, all the rehab started then. And um, to, be, to be back racing now, I, I mean, just it feels, feels like I've been given a, a second chance, really. Of course, the Vuelta España is your aim for this year, and it's going to be your final Grand Tour with the team, which must be quite a strange feeling, having been involved with the team for <laughs> so long. Uh, it gives you, I guess, an added purpose. What would it mean to win that? Yeah, it is a, it is a strange feeling, but, um, I mean, it, it's quite sentimental for me as well. I mean, the, the Vuelta España was the race where I first really discovered myself as a Grand Tour contender uh, nine years ago with the team. So to be doing that now is uh, my last race with, with Team Ineos. Um, it has quite a sort of special, special feeling to it. A race I've always enjoyed doing and uh, would, would, be, would be great to, to get stuck into a Grand Tour this year in that sense. We're going to be meeting a couple more of your teammates in Egan Bernal and Richard Carapaz in just a moment. So I have to be careful what I say in front of Geraint there. But um, these guys are the future, aren't they, of this team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, they've they're, they're both won Grand Tours themselves. I mean, Egan's won the Tour already, Carapaz has already won the Giro. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're great, great bike riders in their own right, so uh, I, I think the future's safe in that regard, that's for sure. I'm sure they've learnt a lot from both of you, though, being in this team. <laughs> well, G, G can carry on teaching them everything he's learnt over the years. Um, that's for sure. Absolutely. Geraint, Chris, thank you so, so much. Best of luck and uh, enjoy the next few weeks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the reigning winners of the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia, Egan Bernal and Richard Carapaz. An elite climber used to compete and overcoming all conditions. It's Richard Carapaz. The 2019 race winner on aiming to get the job done this year, it's Egan Bernal. talk to you, Egan, in just a moment. But Richard, if I can start with you, not only are you about to race your first Tour de France, but your first Grand Tour with this team. How have you found your first year with Ineos Grenadiers? La verdad que es muy emocionante para mí estar aquí en esta partida del Grand Tour y sobre todo que es una gran experiencia para mí. Muy contento, muy emocionado. Luego, pues también me orgullece mucho ser el primer ecuatoriano en ser partícipe de esta, de esta gran vuelta y, y pienso que, que la voy a disfrutar mucho. Last year you became the first Ecuadorian to not only win the Giro d'Italia, but the first to win a Grand Tour ever. So what are your ambitions going forwards? 
Bueno, lo del año pasado fue algo eh, muy especial y sobre todo muy espectacular para mi país porque eh, siempre en Ecuador no hubo mucho ciclismo y luego ser el campeón de un Gran Tour ha cambiado mucho esto, ¿no? Entonces, para mí, como mi vida diaria también, pero yo aún sigo manteniendo pues, eh, mi vida tranquila, trabajando siempre en los objetivos, como lo he venido haciendo durante estos últimos años y, y creo que eso es la base de todo y lo más importante. And tell us, Richard, if you will, what inspired you as a young boy in Ecuador to pursue cycling and, and how that changed you? Bueno, pienso que sí cambia mucho, ¿no? Porque eh, mi vida diaria, ahora soy como una figura pública que mucha gente tiene, eh, tiene en cuenta y, y bueno, ¿no? Eso me emociona mucho porque hay mucha gente que, que inspiro y pienso que que es muy importante para, para nosotros como, como Ecuador y como país. Thank you so much, Richard. I'm going to just have a chat with Egan now. Egan, we've just heard from a pair in, in Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas who've won eight Grand Tours between them. When you came into this team as a young rider, what kind of things did you learn from them? Uh, yes, they, they are two uh, riders who, who have a lot of, of experience, for sure. Uh, I feel lucky to, to share team with them and in any any race I, I do with them I, I, I learn something so yeah really really happy to 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 say that I am a, a teammate of, of them and uh, yeah for me it's uh, like a dream. When you came into this team you said it was like a dream come true three years ago now you're sitting there on the edge of your next tour as the winner of the Tour de France so tell us what is it about this team that's helped turn you into one of the best riders in the world? Well this team has uh, a lot of experience too I mean it's just, not just the, the riders it's about uh, the team it's about uh, the staff uh, so uh, they are trying to to improve uh, every year and they push you hard to, to, to improve also yourself. So, yeah, it's, uh, I, I have learned a lot of, of, of this team and for sure uh, I need to, to improve more. But uh, yeah, I, I have already won a, a Tour de France and I'm really exciting for, for, for this one. Yeah, you're just days away now from the Grand Depart and you're sitting there as the reigning champion, the man everybody will want to beat. How different does that feel to you, to say, last year's experience? Uh, it's different, eh? it's different uh, because uh, this year I, I will have the, the number one. So I, I want to, to just put this number in the, in, the, in the back and go to race, go to do my best and uh, yeah, really exciting for that. I, I want to, to start the race and just uh, go for it. Well, Egan, best of luck. Enjoy, if you can as well, the challenges that lie ahead in the next few weeks. And thank you to Richard as well. Thank you. Well, next, we're going to hear some more from team principals today, Brailsford and head coach Tim Kerrison. But first, let's take a look at the Ineos Grenadiers 2020 Tour de France team. So, so, Dave and Tim, let's chat through the selection then for your team for this year's Tour de France. And we'll start, of course, Dave, with the man with the number one on his back, Egan Bernal. How special is it to have him back in the team and be working with him again this year? Well, I mean, it's, it's, uh, he's such a young, exciting talent that it's hard not to um, get enthused by his sort of contagious enthusiasm for the race itself. You know, he's won the race already. He's a young guy, he's got years ahead of him in this race. So really, in many respects, he's, you know, he's obviously ambitious, but he's got no pressure. You know, it's a, it's a kind of nice position to be in, really, because, you know, he's just going to enjoy it, going to express himself, but he's got years to come, you know. So as a leader, I like that, that he's in that position, you know, free in his mind, whereas maybe some of our competitors, they get in towards the late 20s, 30s, they haven't got many chances left to try and win. And I think that puts them in a very different position, you know, a bit more, a bit more pressure on them to perform maybe and he's going to just go and express himself which is um, which is a very enjoyable position to be in 
Tim, a man for whom this is all going to be very new is Pavel Sivakov, his Tour de France debut. What kind of advice are you and the more experienced riders giving him ahead of the next three weeks? Yeah, it's Pavel's first Tour de France, but he showed us his class and his Grand Tour potential last year in the Giro d'Italia when he, when he finished in the top ten as a 21-year-old, which is, you know, it's very rare for a guy that young uh, to finish that high up uh, overall in a Grand Tour. Perhaps what not everyone realises about Pavel is, um, you know, he was born and grew up in France, so he's got a, a, a Russian name, but a, but a French heart and a French passport, and he's, he's racing on, on home roads, which he's really excited about. So I'd say to Pavel, be patient, be efficient, save energy at every opportunity um, and uh, enjoy the hopefully some home support racing on home roads. And Dave, what about Richard Carapaz? We all know the pedigree of him in the Grand Tours. Uh, how exciting is it to work with a rider like him? Yeah, again, uh, you know, it's his first Tour de France, actually. So um, when we sat and started racing again after a break, we looked at all, all the whole team and decided what what formation, what do we learn, what, what do we need to do from a selection point of view, and we brought Richard into the team. Um, he's a great climber, we watched him for, you know, followed him for a good couple of years before he came into this team. First Ecuadorian ever to ride the Tour de France was exciting in itself, but he's fast. Uh, he, you know, right at the end of this, he's got, he's got speed, and um, he's a very clever, very intelligent guy. And I think the combination of him and Egan together, um, backed up by young Pavel, who's in his, again, you know, coming out with his first experience, I think it's a pretty potent and very exciting kind of uh, dynamic between the three of those riders. And we're looking forward to really sort of maybe change the style of racing that we've uh, approached the, uh, the tour with in the past and um, be a bit more expressive. Oh, she'll see. That's interesting stuff. Dylan Van Baal, Tim, is a rider you coach uh, as well. He was extremely impressive in the Tour last year. Are we going to expect more of that this time? Yeah, Dylan's one of the one of the hardest working guys in professional cycling. He started as a classics rider. He still is a great classics rider, but increasingly he's become a great climber. And um, you know, I think we can expect to see him on the flatter stages, uh, supporting the guys, helping the the other guys save energy. But we'll also see him in the climbs, and importantly, we'll see him in the third week as other riders are starting to fade and get tired. Dylan will still be there, going strong in the third week. We know it's going to be a challenging race day, but how important is it then to have a versatile rider like Mikhail Kwiatowski? Yeah, Kwiatowski, he's very good technically. Uh, and he's got a real gear. I mean, he's a, he's, he's a real racer. He's a ball, natural born racer and his ability to move around a peloton and sense what's happening and to close gaps and just read a race is phenomenal. And what that brings to the team, of course, is as we're coming into the, you know, more critical closing stages of a race, he just reads it beautifully and he guides the guys around. He can, you know, he just he anticipates what's coming and he shares that amongst the group. They take a lot of confidence from that. He's a public character. You know, he's very up, he's very motivated. And like I say, that natural kind of racing instinct is something that sort of pervades the whole team, the whole group. So he's great, great character to have in, in, in the team bus, as it were. And Tim, Luke Rowe has been part of the winning team in the last five editions of the Tour. Something of a, a lucky charm. Yeah, I guess so. Luke's our, our road captain. He's, uh, he's the best in the world at that job. Uh, and he's one of the most experienced, you know, probably the most experienced rider in the race at winning Grand Tours or, or being in, in, in Tour de France winning teams. And, uh, you know, we'll, we really value that experience and the calmness that Luke brings to the team. Uh, Dave, Jonathan has been a rock this season. How impressed have you been with his consistency? Yeah, that's, I, I think consistency is absolutely the right word. You know, he's, um, he's he, he was, you know, it's as if cycling, professional cycling is in his blood. He, he understands the sport inside out. He's a great time trialer, fantastic attitude. He's a bright guy. He's really, really bright, intelligent guy. And he's, he's a bit... I don't know, he's a bit of the professor of the group, if you like, and he's very good for the younger guys, gives great advice, he's very calm, always, you know, measured in his approach, tenacious, you know, he's, he's got, I don't know, he's just got so much fight and commitment in him, it's, um, it really is that other lads really respect him, and he's the heart of that engine room of our team. And Tim, Andre's first year with the team, so it must be testament to how well he's fitted in, how well his personality has gelled with the others, that he is part of this tour team. Yeah, Andre's another new rider with the team, but very, very experienced. He, he's, uh, he's done 
many Grand Tours. He's been in, in Grand Tour winning teams before, but it's his first with the team. So we're all really looking forward to going on that journey with him. From the moment I think we all met him, we realised he, he was a fantastic character. He's a fantastic fit for the team. He brings a load of energy and fun and experience to the team. And I, th I think everyone in the team is really looking forward to spending the next three weeks with him and going on this journey. And we are days away now from the start of this tour, a tour that maybe months ago we, you know, we didn't know it was going to happen or when it was going to happen. And it's testament to the, the hard work from all the teams and everybody involved that well, the bikes will get going. Tell us, does it feel very different, Dave? Or you know, have you kind of adapted very quickly yeah. to this normal? Mm, it does feel different. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's uh, maybe the race itself, you know, the riders in the race is, is quite sort of similar to, to what it has. But the whole of the logistics around what we do, because we move every day like a moving circus, and, and to be to remain socially distanced and safe and do all the all of the things that we have to do, um, we've had to modify uh, quite dramatically actually what the, the the way that we're operating to keep the, the team safe and ourselves safe, obviously, but also for the public and um, to be respectful of the societies where we travel through. So. That's been a big undertaking. But the great thing about it, everybody's been resourceful and pragmatic and everybody's pulling together. And hopefully we get this great event on the road and, um, and, and can entertain and do everything that sport's supposed to do. Absolutely. And it's as exciting as ever for, for all of us who are waiting to watch. And I'm sure for you as a team as well to see how this, this team that you've selected gels, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fun to... What I like about this team is, is there's a lot of new kind of, there's new personalities. It's quite a young team. You know, it's their, the start of their journeys, a lot of these guys, and, and, and you can feel that. And it's like this, there's nothing to lose. There's no, there's no pressure. We've won it before. We've won the Tour de France many, many occasions. We won on it just as much, if, if, just as much, if not more than previously. But the pressure's not on us. You know, pressure's on the other guys whose chances are running out. You know, they're getting older. They haven't won it. They're desperate to win it. So they can, they can make the running, as it were, and we're just going to have a good time. Thank you so much to Dave and Tim. Best of luck. We hope you've enjoyed our exclusive insights and a little bit of the backstory about how this team for this year's Tour de France came to be. All we do now is wish them the very best of luck for the next few weeks and beyond to the Ineos and Grenadiers. Take care. Bye-bye.